Erie police are still searching for suspects as a young teen remains in the hospital after being shot in the head. Health experts warn that the pandemic will get worse in the months to come. People are walking through a winter wonderland here at Asbury Woods tonight. We'll tell you about this special event. Live in high definition from your news leader, this is Jet 24 Action News at 11. New at 11, a 13-year-old boy is still in the hospital after getting shot in the head Saturday night. Erie police tell us no arrests have been made and they are still searching the area. Now, this happened on East 20th Street, right off Buffalo Ro Road around 9.30 Saturday. After the shooting, the boy was sent to UPMC Hammett ER. Later that night, he was transferred to a hospital in Pittsburgh. At least 280,000 Americans have died from COVID-19, according to Johns Hopkins University. ABC's Raina Roy reports that cities and states across the U.S. are now reimposing restrictions to help curb the spread. Tonight, more than 80% of the most populous state in the U.S. will be under strict new orders to stay home. California hitting its highest single-day total of COVID-19 cases today, topping 30,000. Nine months into the pandemic, health experts warn things will get even worse. But the reality is December and January and February are going to be rough times. Restrictions covering much of Southern California, San Joaquin Valley, and the Bay Area as officials desperately try to stop the spread. Business owners in Los Angeles speaking out against the new orders, which reduced retail capacity, shut down salons, and dining. I'm losing everything. Everything I own is being taken away from me. In New York, the Staten Island bar owner arrested for opening illegally opened right back up again Friday to a packed and unmasked crowd. This as the U.S. hits another record high. More than 100,000 Americans now hospitalized, according to the COVID tracking project. Roughly 2,000 people lost each day. I put an ungodly amount of people in body bags that uh, that I wasn't prepared to do. But there is hope on the horizon. The first vaccine from Pfizer could be granted emergency use authorization soon after Thursday's FDA hearing, and states are getting ready to distribute it. I believe we could see FDA authorization within days. Hard hit El Paso, Texas, has already received several thousand doses, but the head of Operation Warp Speed telling CNN today that vaccines won't be widely distributed for months. We have a vaccine. There is light at the end of the tunnel but we will not all have the vaccine in our arms before May or June, so we need to be very cautious and vigilant. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Erie County seen another triple-digit day of COVID-19 cases. The State Department of Health is reporting 225 new cases Sunday. That brings the county total to over 6,700. The State Department of Health reporting 8,629 new cases today. The total reported since March now stands at over 420,000. There were 69 new deaths reported as well. That brings the total number of people who have died in the state from COVID-19 to 11,331. Elsewhere in the region, Crawford County, 74 new cases. Warren County, 28 cases. Ashtabula County reporting 49 cases today. In Chautauqua County, uh, currently their total is 1,883. Another Crawford County senior care facility was hit with COVID-19 cases this weekend. According to the Crawford County Commissioner's Office, the Crawford County Care Center is reporting eight residents who have tested positive for COVID-19. Three of them are symptomatic. In addition, one staff member tested positive and is also considered symptomatic. The Care Center administrative team is on-site quarantining positive and probable residents. Jet 24 Action News is your local election headquarters. As Inauguration Day nears, President-elect Joe Biden is spending the weekend working on his transition. President Trump, on the other hand, campaigned in Georgia last night for two Republican senators who are in a tight runoff race. ABC's Faith Abube reports that Trump continues to repeat his baseless claims of a stolen election. Even though the numbers are in, showing Joe Biden defeated President Trump by more than 6 million votes, the president is continuing to spread conspiracy theories about a rigged election. 
We've never lost an election. We're winning this election. And when you look at all of the corruption and all of the problems having to do with this election, all I can do is campaign, and then I wait for the numbers. Saturday night, he took to the stage in Georgia, speaking to a mostly maskless crowd to rally support for two Republican senators. Instead, he spent most of his time pushing unfounded claims about widespread voter fraud. It's rigged. It's a fixed deal. Even after a hand recount in the state showed yet again, Biden has in fact won. We've never found systemic fraud, not enough to overturn the election. We have over 250 cases right now. Trump did call up Senators Kelly Leffler and David Perdue, the two Republican incumbents fighting for their seats in tight runoff races against Democratic challengers Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff. But their brief remarks were interrupted by chants of fight for Trump. I want to say something personal to President Trump. Hey, guys, I want to say something for President Trump personally. Guys. With the voter registration deadline less than 24 hours away, organizers were fanning out across the state. Excuse me, are you both registered to vote? Yes, ma'am. The two Senate runoffs will decide the balance of power in the U.S. Senate for the next two years. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And for all the latest election news, you can go to your election headquarters. That's on our website, yourerie.com. Asbury Woods is transforming into a winter wonderland with some new modifications to keep you safe. This year, you'll be able to see hundreds of lights while also enjoying the great outdoor scenery. Star Bodhi joins us now in the control room with more on this tradition. Hi, Star. Good evening, Brian. Officials from Asbury Woods say they want to keep these traditions alive, but ultimately keep people safe while they enjoy the holiday season. And some families we spoke to say that this event is helping them get into the holiday spirit. Asbury Woods is helping visitors beat the holiday blues this year. Having, you know, Christmas lights and having time together as a family during the holiday season is just one way to try to bring back a sense of normalcy. More than 80 visitors are walking through a winter wonderland on Sunday as lights twinkle across the wetlands and the woods. Preparation for this year's event started in the fall. Dozens of volunteers working together to plan how to safely allow visitors to the event. During the pandemic, it's just nice to get out just have some time outside of the house we are usually just cooped up and sitting around so it's nice to be able to get out here with this awesome natural accessory this year's traditions come with modifications usually the nature center has activities inside but this year it's focusing on the great outdoors for a third of a mile lights will shine bright across the boardwalk for people to enjoy Winter Wonderland is one way to keep traditions alive during these troubling times. This lights that they do now is so special. Quinn here, he loves the lights. He likes looking at them and seeing them, so it's special for him as he starts to get into Christmas. So it's, uh, it's important for us, especially this time of year. This event is free to the public. Now, this event will also take place every day except Christmas Eve and Christmas Day from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Brian? Thank you, Star. Coming up on Jet 24 Action News at 11 o'clock, a former Clarion University student was shot and killed last week, and police continue to search for her killer. That's after a first look at the forecast. Hey, Craig. Uh, Brian, more of the same as we go into uh, Monday, so that means clouds, cold, maybe a break or two of sun, some flurries. We'll give you the rest of the forecast. Come on. From your news leader, you're watching Brian Wilk, meteorologist Craig Flint, and Mike Fenner with sports. This is Jet 24 Action News, your news leader.